How's it going everyone? This is Dixon of the Ultimate Gamer I'm logging on. Now that I already went over my first impression video on the Atari 2600 Plus, as well as doing the radio cam episode after that, now it's time to start a short marathon on the Atari 2600 games that I own on cartridges. Starting in this episode. I will be starting off with a game from the 10-1 cart that came with the console. And this is the game I don't own a physical copy of. However, I mentioned before I own four physical copies that are on this 10-1 cart. And I'm only going to be reviewing one game on here. Because, like I said, I already own four physical games. And plus, half of the games on this 10-1 cart are two-player only games. So unless if I have a second player, I will have to put those games aside. And besides, I'll have to do one game at a time for some games anyway. Especially for a game I'm going to go over with. Since it's a pioneer for many adventure games and adventure role-playing games for years to come. Well, this adventure is not a role-playing game. I doubt there's any role-playing games on the Atari 2600 console. Not that I know of. But I got to thinking that this game and precisely some other games on the Atari 2600 gave ideas for some adventure role-playing games for the future, especially on consoles. The Atari 2600 game released in 1980 was simply titled as Adventure. They like call this game Adventure like it's the first adventure in a video game. Well, it's one of the first of its kind that kind of paved way for feature games especially on consoles, but adventure games of course started out on home computers. Go back to 1976, like Colossal Cave Adventures, which was a text-based adventure. Then there was Zork 1, and when it comes to role-playing games on home computers, there's the Dungeons & Dragons series, Ultima series, and Wizardry series that started around the same time as this adventure game did on the 2600 console. Adventure was one of its kind for home consoles, designed by Warren Robinette and released in 1980 on the Atari 2600 console. And this adventure was inspired by the 1976 Colossal Cave Adventure game that I mentioned. You know, text adventure games like this. So pretty much anything in gaming started out as popularity for retro gaming enthusiasts come back these days. I'd like to get a little bit more into these type of games. Anyway, this adventure game sold over one million copies. And it did really well. But how does it hold up after 44 years? A friendly reminder. We're talking about the Use Your Imagination era. So video games and adventures came a long way from this. When I first played this adventure game off Atari compilations, I had no clue what the hell I'm doing. And I recently got more into the game from the 10 and one cart. Because it was one of its pioneers, Adventure Game is an important piece of history, and Adventure does deserve to be acknowledged, no matter how the game holds up. Use your imagination at its finest. Inspired by an adventure computer game that uses text to advance your way through the game to inspire Warren Robinette to make a game that uses graphics, as well as having a square as the main character, or main warrior, or fighter, or avatar. Now the main quest for this adventure is to go out to a different castle to retrieve the enchanted chalice and return it to your castle, which is the Golden Castle. From the start and on your way, you will need to find keys to unlock castle doors, as well as the sword that looks like an arrow icon pointing to the left. And you need that sword to slay dragons that you come across. 
But if the dragon gets you, you go back to the starting point. But it won't undo any of your progress, at least. At first glance, these dragons kind of look like ducks. They sure do look like ducks, don't they? Quack, quack, quack. Go duck hunting with a sword. Quack, quack. Oh, dragon hunting. Boom. All right, all right, all right. And you also have to have the right key for the right castle entrance. There are other items in the game that you may need time to time, like a portable bridge to cross over areas in front of you, like a gap or a waterfall or something, as well as a magnet, which comes in handy for out of reach items or if any items get stuck in some areas you can't get to. This adventure game has three skill variations. The first setting is a small kingdom, the second setting is a large kingdom, and the third setting is a large kingdom except with a higher difficulty and random things. Now the minor difficulty settings with how you control the dragon skills when dealing with the dragon, like with the difficulty switch on the left is to control their speed, slow dragons or aggressive dragons, and the difficulty switch on the right is to control the fears. Like dragons don't run from you, or they run from you if you have a sword. Really quick, I'm still learning about the difficulty switches. I thought they were for each player. I guess that probably works out for like two player only games. And both of the difficulty switches are useful for one player games for different difficulty variations. Now in the large kingdom, they will have this bat that takes items or exchanges them. They don't harm you, but they can be a real pain in the ass to deal with, but also sometimes helpful too. Only thing that can harm you in the game is the dragons. The first kingdom is more like a milk run challenge. The large kingdom is more of an accurate challenge. For a true adventure. You'll be going through mazes, dark room mazes, multiple dragons, castle to castle once you find the key to that castle. The more you play it, the more you'll likely get the pattern down. And you have unlimited lives in this game, from the looks of it. If you get captured by the dragon multiple times, it just takes you back to where you started, but won't undo any of the progress as I mentioned. You can only hold one item at a time, so there's no inventory of items to store, meaning this is not Legend of Zelda. In Adventure, you can't have a sword or the enhanced chalice together. You can only take one item at a time. Yeah, I know that sucks, but maybe it has something to do with limitations of Atari. And besides, this game came out before the Zelda series started anyway. The adventure game might be outdated, and younger gamers wouldn't understand. Well, when I played any of the Atari 2600 games from the early Zeros for the first time off the Atari compilation, which was the Atari Anthology, I didn't understand any of the 2600 games myself. But we all have to understand this is where they all started. And it influenced many other featured game developers into making their own games as well as a growing franchise a series throughout the years, like Zelda or Elder Scrolls. So, the adventure game is indeed a rewarding experience. And another thing to address, the adventure game was one of the first well-known games, if not the first, with an easter egg hidden in the game. Well, it's not exactly an easter egg, it's just the written text saying created by Warren Robinett, which is true. Totally true. 
And it's not exactly an Easter egg. It's actually his signature. And there's a big story behind that Easter egg or signature, depending on what you want to call it. But I'm not going to go into details about that. That'll take a little too long. But I will leave a few links below, including a link that has Warren Robin explaining about his signature. Now, how does Adventure hold up for today? I would have to say, like many other games around that time that I discovered at first many years later, and the lack of understanding back then, that was until when I finally decided to dig deeper into them. Adventure holds more value to me as of today than it did when I first discovered it. Adventure may be outdated when playing as a square avatar, don't get me wrong about that, but the graphics for the time being are graphics. And I had an awarding experience when going through Adventure. Though to be honest, I haven't went through the game thoroughly to the point where I haven't completed Game Mode 3 or find that easter egg, or should I say the signature, of the creator, Warren Robinett. Yes, Warren Robinett created the game, not Atari. Atari is just a publisher for the game. I even stated that on my Ultramania Gamer Adventure wallpaper and thumbnail. Anyway, that's all I gotta say about Adventure. Pretty innovative game. And there are a few things that are left out surrounding the Adventure game. But time is valuable in certain ways at present, especially when I have other projects or more important projects to work on. And besides, I'm trying to keep these Atari reviews for this marathon as short as I possibly can. But if you want to know more about the adventure game itself, I'll leave a few links below in the reference area. Now the next episode, I will be doing my take on the reissued Atari PAL controllers. And I will be playing and discussing all four of the games off the 4-in-1 cart while demonstrating the peripheral. Till then, this is Dixon of the Ultimate Gamer Room, logging off.